Hey guys, Thomas Cecilia Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Spider-Man Far From Home. Of course, this is going to be a spoiler review, so if you have not seen the movie, then you can feel free to skip this review until you have. And the spoiler warning has been said. With that being said, we once again follow Parker after the incident of the end game, ushering us into the fourth point of a new segment of the superheroes of the Marvel variety, and the movie makes sure pretty early on to tell us that it is, it is the next installment. So if anyone had any quarrels with that, the movie literally says, you know, one of the students in the beginning says, we're looking into the new, like, era, we're moving into the new section, so... If the movie is going to outright state the obvious, then uh, that is what I'm going to go by. Anywho, those very two students that I were talking about also talk about how the snap that we have seen in the previous movies have affected those who've, that came back. And they, yes, they did try to explain this, where the people of the snap did not age, whereas the people who stayed remaining on Earth, of course, aged. Which made for a lot of confusion. So, that's the, t it's the thing, is like how much time has skipped between the snap and the age processing, because one of the characters says that his younger brother became older than him, unless that particular character's brother was like only a few, like, like, seconds apart, maybe? I don't know, like, did, like, how much time passage was between the snap and the return of the snap? I think they said five years, I want to say? I forget. Anywho, Time nonsense aside, um, there's a little bit of other issues I've had, I have with this movie, but we'll get there. So anyways, Parker is getting ready to, uh, have himself a vacay, and in the process he's talking to his friend, the one who knew he was already Spider-Man, uh, trying to figure out how he can get into contact with MJ who's keeping her distance, kind of just doing her own thing for, you know, a good portion of it. So, the lot of them end up going to a different location. Um, I forget where they went first, but there are a few locations where they end up. Uh, the location I don't think is too, too important. What is important is that eventually, after some sightseeing and uh, just lounging about, uh, a water-based creature attacks, mysteriously, and Spider-Man is going up against it, and, well, he's in, he's in Peter Parker form, so he's trying not to, like, do anything, except, like, there are things getting distracted all around, so he's trying to save the day from a distance, while a mysterious new figure, as we've seen in the trailer, Mysterio, appears. And I think a lot of people had a little bit of quarrel with uh, Mysterio being a superhero among them, but don't worry, this movie got that part covered, at least that much. So, we see that Mysterio, with the help of Spider-Man in the distance, is able to quarrel the beast away. So everyone's impressed, uh, Spider-Man gets... They called by Fury throughout. Uh, eventually makes contact with him after some shenanigans at the hotel or whatever. Uh, so, uh, the other issue we are dealing with is um, him sort of filling in the shoes for Iron Man, one of the people who stayed passed away after the fact. Um, among the others that they show at the very, very beginning, which would be... Uh, Widow and um, Captain America, apparently, uh, yeah, even though it showed him coming back at an old age. I guess he died at, between the two movies. I don't know. I guess. Um, so, yeah, uh, that happens. So, 
Uh, Fury gets to talk him with some with Spider Man, and uh, Mysterio is there as well with him. Uh, they're talking about how there are going to be potential more issues going forward with all these other elementals that are popping up through Mysterio's world, and now they're they've like crossed over to his world, Spider Man's world. Like he, he mentions cross dimensional, uh, universal like travel, but. I don't know if that's bullshit or not anymore, question mark. Because, again, I already said spoiler alert, Mysterio ends up being actual evil. Wow, what a shocker. But, I mean, it doesn't show that in the trailer, but that Mysterio is meant to be evil, so I'm not even all that surprised. So the way, the way they get about doing this is that, actually, apparently, he was actually set up in one of the previous... Uh, I think this was shown in the previous Spider-Man movie, or it could have been another one. I'm, uh, my memory of this is a little bit foggy, but um, it was when Iron Man was like denying like a student, um, like a project. Like he, I think he like chose Spider-Man's over this kid with the who had these glasses that were able to do all this tech stuff. Um, so we saw that uh, replay out in this movie. Uh, and apparently Mysterio is working with a bunch of other people who used to work for, um, for Iron Man, a.k.a. Tony Stark, and all these people were disgruntled workers who were pretty sick of being ignored. Uh, you know, Tony Stark told all these people probably no to some extent, or et cetera, et cetera, so now they want to get recognized even if that means they have to destroy stuff in the process of uh, getting about doing that. And Mysterio uh, and the man behind it are sort of the forefront of this operation. So, as they're going along, Spider-Man is uh, also tasked with trying to uh, hide his identity from the others who still don't know yet, as well as try to stay on the vacation as much as possible. But, uh, as in the moment Mysterio is still good, considering in the point of the movie, he's given the, the glasses uh, from Spider-Man. Spider-Man got these gla gift glass glasses from Iron Man as a last gift. Uh, from the, uh, Tony's friend, uh, I forget his name in the movie, uh, he's the director of the first Iron Man movie, uh, anyway, so he's given this gift, which is this pair of glasses that can, like, do all this tech stuff, uh, he eventually gives it to Mysterio, who, like, celebrates with all the other guys, but there was more to the plan, uh, to get recognized, uh, that being doing more attacks, making Mysterio look like a hero, and then um, getting the media press to get all up on mis making the Mysterio all super famous and whatnot. So, uh, Spider-Man goes through some costume changes in this, which is a uh, good sight for sore eyes, is that this, isn't, this has been something that's been kind of surprisingly lacking in I felt like in a lot of the other Spider-Man movies, except for, I want to say, the first one? Yeah, like, I, like the first one, it was like, oh, you know, how he'll have, like, the, like the fake Spider-Man costume at the beginning, and then just build the, the professional Spider-Man costume, and that's about it. Um, in all the other movies, he doesn't really... Well, except, I guess, technically the third one, if you want to count the symbiote, the symbiote costume as a separate costume, I guess that technically counts. Uh, but here we actually get a few different costumes, including a sneaking Spider-Man suit, as well as, um... Ah, oh, man, it comes up later in the movie, but I don't remember the name of the suit, but it's a separate suit from the one he has, so there are a few suit changes in the movie. Um as he's fighting Mysterio later on. So, uh, another elemental attacks. Uh, Mysterio left behind some sort of clue. It was a fire-based one where the, these kids, uh, 
Spider-Man's friend was like, oh, I'll well, sneak out of this area and go to this area, or this danger is going to happen. Uh, in the process, MJ also did that, also snuck out, went in. Uh, she uh, came into contact with a drone later on, uh, as we see, pretty vaguely. Uh, Mysterio and Spider-Man once again doing their best. Uh, Mysterio putting on the great show, Spider-Man actually doing legit things, but he's in the dark Spider-Man suit. He gets a separate name when he's in that suit. I believe it was like something, the dark monkey or something like that, or something like that, I don't know. Um, so he's saved, uh, the friends are saved, I should say. Um, Spider-Man has a talk, another talk with Mysterio about like, you know, stuff. Um, and so afterwards, he's like trying to talk with MJ after giving the gift uh, to Mysterio. Uh, and then uh, the two of them talk at this bridge location uh, where Spider-Man is trying to admit his feelings, but MJ sort of turns around on him saying, uh, declaring that he is indeed Spider-Man. Uh, he's trying to deny it as much as possible for as long as possible. Uh, she sort of brings up the thing she found and all of the stuff Mysterio has been up to. Uh, he realizes the danger he's gonna she's gonna be in, so he he comes out as Spider-Man to her, and then she's all freaked out, and then he's like, "Oh, whoops." Well, she was like six, as she says, she was like sixty-five percent sure, something like that. Uh, so she now knows. But there was one other student who was um, considered, con you know, getting suspicious of uh, Peter Parker. Always like going on about. Uh, we saw him getting a snap pic of uh, him undressing and with like this lady, and then it was like a comedic moment, and then like. Spider-Man got the hacking device and then sent a drone after him and then had to destroy the drone secretly. Um, so, obviously, the bully character, who's not like Eddie Brock, he has like a separate name, he's like Mark something. Um, I want to say that <laughs> the, kid, the, the vibe I got and the sort of implied jokes were like, oh, he's kind of secretly gay. I, th I think that the, that's what they, what they were going for there, but, um, of course, it, it being Disney, they probably wouldn't confirm it unless they were going to confirm it way beforehand, what they, what they did with the live-action uh, Beauty and the Beast, which failed on them, uh, Disney anyways. Um, so they sort of just make a joke about it, and that's as far as it goes. Uh, anyway, getting back to the task at hand. Uh, so, uh, Spider-Man figures out that it's Mysterio, and Mysterio starts to figure out that Spider-Man knows. He puts two and two together, Parker, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Parker. Um, so he sets this elaborate system up where the two of them fight, and he's using all of them, this, this mystic stuff. He's using the drones to like create all these projections and holograms and all this stuff. It looks all authentic, and this is where Spider-Man's uh, second spider change of suit happens. Um, as he's fighting uh, these dro drones off, or is like fighting Mysterio off. Mysterio pretends to get defeated by uh, Fury, uh, but it and him as Fury asks about like what who Spider-Man told. Uh, Spider-Man tells the truth, and now Mysterio wants to go after um, MJ and all the rest of the friends that would have known about uh, the secret identity of Spider-Man and himself more particularly. So. It is now up to Spider-Man. He get he calls um, Tony's friend and uh, tells warns um, tells him to like warn Fury about what's going on. So Spider-Man, uh, while he's on this plane with the Tony's friend, uh, he builds another suit. So another suit change um, with more futuristic design. He's doing like the Iron Man like work uh, on the new suit. 
Um, we are seeing uh, Fury getting uh, the update of um, Mysterio's uh, heel turn, or turn to the villainy side uh, more abruptly. Uh, so he has one of his close workers take out the drones that are trying to take them out uh, on top of keeping on top of the situation at hand. All the while, Spider-Man arrives as a third and uh, aggressive wind monster appears uh, and starts attacking them once more. Spider-Man goes into from above. Uh, he dives into the monster, he sees all the drones, starts attacking them, Mysterio figures it out eventually, he's like in this distant area. Uh, so, we see that Spider-Man goes through some fighting action, fighting off the drones, and then try to go after Mysterio himself. Uh, Mysterio trying to use more of that, uh, more of the drones to try to create all of these illusions, but Spider-Man uses his focus and mind and all this, and maybe even a bit of spider sense if that it was jokingly called the tingles throughout the movie whatever um so uh spider-man breaks through uh he fights off the drones he sees uh a beaten down mysterio tries to punch him uh or tries to like get him to talk about stuff and then like gets catches the real one that's like behind him there was like one last illusion left um and i forget what led to mysterio getting deathed but he ends up dying <laughs> but i don't know i think he like shot himself in the process of trying to hit spider-man i don't know it's very unclear um so Mysterio is taken out, things return to the normal, Spider-Man returns to MJ who now knows, and the friends along the way, who are also, they had been, they were being chased uh, with uh, Tony's friend in tow, so they were following him throughout the entire chase scene while Spider-Man was fending off uh, the drones. So, they all reunite, uh, Spider-Man, uh, slash Parker and uh, MJ finally come to the center of this bridge. Uh, Spider-Man gets this young kiss of love and things are all happy-go-lucky. Woo! And that was Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, I think I missed a little thing where it's like, um, Spider-Man's talking with like, uh, Aunt May and um, Tony's friend, and then then joins MJ for like a little after thing, um, and yeah, that was far from home. Uh, you know, the stuff at the beginning of like the time travel, uh, 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 the, uh, the the Thanos snap, trying to explain all that nonsense. Um, it you know it's stupid. It it definitely is. Um, you know, Mysterio's backstory, I, I don't know if I even believe it now, because, like, the whole him being a villain part kind of, like, makes it all questionable. Um, I don't even know. The action scene was okay uh, toward the end. Um, Mysterio's death was very unclear. <laughs> um... So yeah, the movie had its issues, I, I think. Um, I'm still, I think I'm still dealing with superhero fatigue at this point. Um, like I said, uh, I think it was in the last superhero review I did, uh, I talked about how I want to see more new superheroes come out. Uh, you know, I've been pushing for Syndicate X uh, for quite a while. Um, of course, this is the superhero thing that I've been working on, uh, the book that I already published and nobody cares about yet, uh, except maybe one or two people. Uh, but, that being said, for what this movie is, it does have its flaws. Um, it's definitely not as good as the previous Spider-Man movie, in, at least in this installment, I feel. 
Um, you know, the trailers, they do avoid the whole Mysterio being the evil villain. Um, I, I do appreciate their ability to show the trailers. I, d I don't think they revealed that. I could be wrong. Um, that's, is, that is a possibility. Um, so... Uh, I'd give this movie a 6 out of 10. I wouldn't say it was all bad. Um, you know, it was still an enjoyable film. I, I do think that uh, there are quite a few issues in terms of just making the story fit into the whole narrative. Like, it has the unfortunate circumstance of being forced to be the next installment of the end game um and i think it's kind of the point too because you know it's like oh is spider-man supposed to be the next iron man and all that you know him questioning that and the answer being the obvious answer of he'll just be spider-man and all that um so yeah it, it it's tough um, to say, you know, as a movie on its own, because it's so, de it's still so dependent of Endgame, um, especially the beginning part, uh, Mysterio, I feel like, kind of, you know, intro introducing that, uh, helps it from being, um, bad, I suppose. Um, I will say that it is interesting to see Spider-Man deal with one villain that was able to create a whole bunch of fake villains, technically. Um, you know, this is all Mysterio. He's, he's the one creating all of these, uh, elementals and stuff like that, so... Uh, they found a way to incorporate, like, oh, Spider-Man should be fighting various things, but... They keep it to one villain, technically speaking, throughout the movie. So that was, that that part is pretty clever in terms of like, how do we keep the action going? Um, so yeah, that part's a bit clever. Um, I found the character of MJ to be okay-ish. Um, I felt like it took a little bit for her to get to a point of like, oh, you know, she's she figured it out, I guess. She did her part. Um, I feel like when they got separated, um, she could have done a bit more fighting off the drones a little bit more, maybe. Because um, MJ is very resourceful as a character, I feel. Um, she always kind of, you know, I, I feel like... When it's done like that, it's a little bit better. But this, then again, this is a different interpretation of MJ. Technically, also, she's a younger MJ as well. Um, so there's also that to consider. Uh, so I don't know. I think she could have. I think she could have done something a little bit more there. Um, even so. So yeah, there's that. Um, you know, the side characters, uh, Spider-Man's friend who just knows, is kind of just dating some girl, and then they break up for whatever reason um, at the end of the movie. Uh, so there, there's that bit. Um, you know, the stuff with the elementals is fun. You know, it's with Spider-Man keeping his distance. Um, you know, Mysterio luring that out, especially during the fire elemental phase, it would make sense to stay back from a fire elemental. It's on fire. So that was pretty smart on Mysterio's part. Again, um, so Mysterio def definitely has his moments of like, haha, I see what you're doing there. After the fact, after you figure it out, it's all Mysterio all along. You can kind of go back and go, ah, so that's why he was saying that actually. Um, so yeah, um, Fury kind of having a more talkative side in this as well, uh, his role, uh, I feel, I also feel like I'm starting to not like Nick Fury, um, honestly, I feel, especially with his character in this, um, 
the way he just keeps dictating to Spider-Man, he's like, you have to be this hero. You have to step up. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to be the Avenger. It's like, let Spider-Man get to that decision on his own. I think he was going to get there on his own. I think they pushed that a little bit too much in the movie for uh, Fury. Um, I forget if um, Nick Fury ever, like, if there's ever a point of, like, him, like, crossing the line in the comic books. Because I kind of feel like that's where they were going with this in this movie is, like, you know, Nick Fury's always, like, demanding, like, Spider-Man do this, and Spider-Man, you know, he has to choose, he has to be the, but he has to be the Avenger, though, he has to choose that side, um, you know, it, it, it definitely was pushing it a little bit too much from Fury's side, so I'm not, you know, I'm not sure how that's gonna, how that's playing out, um, but yeah, it, it, at least in this movie in particular, I felt it was a little bit too much. Too much. Um, so yeah, that's about everything I think that's at least in this movie. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, so uh, I'll stick with a six out of ten. It was it was almost close to being a five. I feel like there's certain. I think like the action helps it out a little bit um, in that regard. Um, so yeah, this definitely is a downgrade, um, but I, I, I you know, I think it's still kind of, it's, it, it's, it, it struggles, I, you know, <laughs> I'm actually pushing closer and closer to the five the more I hold out on ending this review, so I think I'm going to go for a five out of ten, I think this one isn't as strong, um, there are definitely too many beats that are too dependent, and the character stuff that is there kind of falls apart in certain areas. I think Mysterio really saved this movie from being even lower. Again, I, I really think so much of this movie uh, really hones in on Mysterio and Parker, you know, him, like, because he's always kind of being pushed in which way or another, and him sort of dealing with the whole Iron Man thing uh, on his own, uh, whether that's seeing Iron Man and all the, the memorial stuff or whatever. Um, and, the, you know, him trying to keep the secret. So I feel like the character moments uh, that are the strongest are between the antagonist and the, the, hero, and the protagonist, uh, the hero and the villain. Uh, all the other characters uh, really they feel like they're just a little bit on for the ride. Kind of hit or miss. Uh, Fury was definitely on the weaker end of the spectrum of that. But again, there are issues I still have had with um, Mysterio uh, at the end of the day. Like, his ending I felt like was really uh, inconclusive. Like, he just sort of dies and it's just like, but how? Uh, you know, the stuff at the beginning, it's just like, okay, you're trying to explain all this time, the, you know, the, the finger snap, and it's just like, okay, you're making it more confusing. Um, Mysterio's backstory, you know, again, with him, um, where he comes from, that part is also kind of just left up in the air now, again. It, it, Mysterio's middle section, when he's faking being the superhero and flying about and not explaining things and not dying, that's when Mysterio's at his best. Uh, but again, there's still a lot of uh, stuff to go through that is kind of like, okay, either that's too confusing or that's just not clear enough. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know, either a 5 or a 6 is where I'm going to stick it. Uh, so that's my spoiler review of Spider-Man Far From Home. And if you enjoyed that, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out that link in the description. I'll head you over to my Discord server. The other will send you over to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye!